Hi, I'm Jonathan Ogle. We're switching things up a bit on this program for obvious reasons. We have many, many great art teachers in our county, all of them utilizing their creative skills to present quality classroom experiences for their students. Today, we're pleased to share some of their work with you. Learn and enjoy. Hello and welcome to our online art class with me, Miss G. So today, we are going to work with one of Miss G's favorite things in the world, food. So we're not actually going to be working with real food, but we are going to create artwork based off food. Uh, today we're going to be making collagraphs and we're going to be making burgers. Okay. So I'm very excited about this. All you need for right now is cardboard. Now I'm going to show you. I use my cereal box cardboard, okay? So what I would say is after you open up your cardboard box, go ahead and give yourself one of the big boxes and then also small. Now if you're using something a little bit smaller, maybe you're not using a cereal box necessarily, just make sure that you give yourself enough room because not only are we gonna build our burger, but we're also going to have um, some extra cardboard backing. Uh, and so if you have a smaller piece of cardboard, go ahead and get a second piece too, all right? So let's get started. So first what we need to do is we're gonna um, draw out our buns, okay? So the perspective that we're gonna do from this is gonna look a little bit silly. It's not gonna look like your front uh, view of a hamburger where you see it stacked in front of your face and you grab it like this and you bite it. Instead, we're gonna sort of layer our ingredients, all right, on top of each other. So I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna draw a circular shape kind of like this and I'm doing this in pencil okay about like this all right so that's gonna be my bun and it's okay you can see I got a little bit messy here and I have some extra lines we're gonna be cutting these out so don't stress too much if you do see pencil lines because those won't actually come through when we do create our prints all right so now I've gone through and I've done my top bun. I could come down here all the way to the bottom and add my second bun, or I could just come here and go ahead and add another one. And I'm gonna actually do it a little bit closer. So something kind of like this. Oh my goodness, check it out. We got a top bun, we got a bottom bun. And now we have to put all the ingredients that are gonna go inside of our bun. So let's start to think about that, okay? We've gotta do our burger. So I'm gonna do my patty and I'm gonna do it in a similar shape, kind of like this, um, you know, sort of like an oval, but I'm gonna maybe make my lines a little bit more uneven as I go to give it a little bit of more shape to it and kind of give that texture that you would see within a patty. So I'm gonna kind of come like this and you can see it's, a, it's almost like I'm making wavy lines as I'm going, right? And some like this. Now you guys can see my patty is about the same size as my buns. I could go ahead and maybe even take this and extend it so it's a little bit past the size of my bun. That's okay. But obviously I don't wanna make it too small. Like I don't wanna make my bun only like this big, right? Because I got a lot of bun on the side. Um, so I'm gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that it extends out a little bit but I don't want to make my patty all the way out here so that my buns can't quite hold it in. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've made my patty. Now you could maybe add some cheese onto this. And the way I would say to do some cheese is we're gonna do sort of like a flat top like this. And then you could come around on both your sides and then sort of meet in like a triangle shape like this, right? So kind of is gonna give the appeal that our cheese is dripping. Now again, that's you're just creating a bit of a straight line. It can have a little bit of a wave to it. Curve onto your sides, come meet down, maybe like a rounded triangle tip. I could even come down here and make that a little bit pointier, okay? And that part would go on top of your burger here, and we'll see that a little bit more once we actually start to go through and assemble our burger together. Okay, so let's think about some of my other ingredients. How about some onion rings, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to draw circles. All right, so I've got circle one, circle two. And you guys see, as I'm drawing these, I'm trying to draw my ingredients pretty close to my other ones, okay? We wanna try and use as much of our space as possible. 
So, all right, here is going to come my third onion ring. I feel like doing three. Now, here's a little trick for doing our onion rings, okay? We need to go ahead and do another circle within here. And I would do this one pretty close to the edge of the other circle that you already created. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this on all three. All right, that part is done. Fantastic. I will show you a trick for cutting these out. The thing when we do collar graphs, um, we can usually take our uh, paper or our cardboard and build on top to either show that inside part or we can just cut it out to show the difference in like what our shape size is. I'm gonna show you on this one how we're gonna cut it out. Um, and then I'm gonna show you with our tomatoes how we're gonna build on top. All right, so let's actually go ahead, let's dive into those tomatoes. So on this side here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to draw one circle and I'm gonna come, let's see here, and I'm gonna draw a second circle, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually show you guys a little trick for how we can create the inside parts of our tomato, like when we slice it. Uh, and so by what we're gonna do in order to do that is we're gonna create two more circles. Trust me on this one. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go ahead and do a circle here. And I'm gonna come up and I'm, I have some space here. So I'm gonna put another circle here. All right, now within these two circles, these two circles are gonna be what um, we're eventually gonna put inside of these ones, okay? So in, in these, I want you to draw a little dot in the center, okay? After you draw that, I want you to do an X through that dot. Okay, make sure the center of your X crosses through the dot. See how I did that? All right, now this is gonna act as a guideline. When you slice your tomato, you're gonna see, all right, the four sections. So let me show you. I'm gonna come here now, and I'm going to create within each one of these little points, like these little triangle shapes I kinda made with my X, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna draw sort of like a rounded, version of that and then come up here and like round it out at the top. Okay, so I'm going to do that on all of them. So again, round it out, still go around like the same, make your lines parallel to your guidelines and then go ahead and connect those. So again, parallel, rounded, connect, parallel, rounded, and connect. So do you see how now I have the inside parts of my tomato? Now I'm actually gonna individually cut those out and then glue them on top of the tomatoes. I'm gonna do that later. All right, this one, I'm gonna do it again. Parallel, rounded, connect. Parallel, rounded, connect. All right, parallel, rounded, connect. One more time, parallel, rounded and connect. Okay. Fantastic. Those are the inside parts of our tomatoes. Uh, and now, let's see. Lastly, I think it would be super important that we add some lettuce, okay? So uh, you can see I'm sort of running out of some room down here at the bottom. I do have this little flap I can keep working on as well as I have my flap up here at the top. Um, and I think I'll use some of this space here. Um, so I'm gonna come here. And in order to draw my lettuce, I'm sort of just going to make some wavy lines and then connect them at the top. So watch what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go wavy line, wavy line, wavy line. And then I'm gonna connect it. Okay, so it's, a, it's an abstract piece of lettuce we got going on here. And then I think what I'm gonna do is come down this way and I'm gonna do more. I would say to create maybe about three lettuce shapes and you can sort of give them uh, varying sizes. Nice, okay. Oh my goodness, check it out. I now have my ingredients right here for my burger. So now we gotta go into the step of cutting these out. Now, usually how I like to do this um, is sort of cut out just in chunks and then go through and cut around those. So I'm gonna start off by first cutting out our buns. Now, what I want you guys to notice too is that I tried to cut pretty close to these before I go through and cut them out just because I want to try and utilize as much of my cardboard as I can, okay? 
Um, this is, you're definitely gonna come back to this sheet of cardboard once we are done cutting out our shapes. So try to make sure that you are um, using it sparingly. All right, so I'm gonna come here and I'm going to go ahead and cut out my bones. Now, a little trick for cutting these out, okay? You can rotate the cardboard as you're cutting. See how I'm rotating this instead of trying to like maneuver my arm like this and cut around with my scissors, okay? So you can just rotate that. And I would cut slow and you're just cutting along the pencil lines that you made. Do not stress if you can still see some of your pencil line because guess what? When we pull our print, you won't see those, I promise. All right, if I were you, go ahead and hold on to scraps like these. You might be using them. All right, so let's come next to our burger, or our patty, and our cheese. Again, cutting and leaving some space. Again, go ahead and hold on to these scraps, okay? You might find that you can use them. Okay, so you can see that I have my pieces cut out here. These are the ones that I need to finish doing. I'm just going to take this and put this to the side for a moment. I'm going to come back to this though, okay? So let's first go ahead and cut out one of our onion rings. So we're going to cut along that outside line that we made. Okay, this outside is circle. Fantastic. Now, what I usually like to do when I need to cut out this center point is I can take my cardboard and I can fold it over like this, all right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of cut an indent. I don't have to perfectly cut, all right, around the lines that I made, but I need to cut out a little part of this, right? Again, go ahead, take that, put that in your scraps pile. Now, when you go to open this back up, all right, you see how I still have some lines here? So now what I can do is I can take my scissors and now like cut along this inside part, okay? So I'm gonna come here and I'm going to cut along that inside line that I made. And voila, I have an onion ring. <laughs> and now I'm gonna do the other two. So my onion rings have now all been cut out. Oh my goodness, look how cute they are. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you the trick with the tomatoes. So let's go ahead and start again by cutting out just our main shape. So as I was cutting, I sort of realized that the um, shapes of my um, little inside parts of my tomato were a little bit smaller. So you can see that I sort of cut around the same shape, um, just to make them a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you that again on this one here. So, again, I am cutting out my tomato. These are going to be our inside pots. So, put those little scraps over there. Okie doke, so I, I might see those are a little bit small, so maybe I'll go ahead and just draw these out a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna take my same shape that I made and just draw around the outside again to make them a little bit bigger. Okay, so wonderful. So, all right, great. So here's the inside parts for my tomato again. And I'm just going to take them and line them all up. Great. Awesome. I love it. <sighs> Look how cute this is. You know how giddy Miss G gets about making food. So now let's talk about our last little bits that we need to cut out, which are going to be our lettuce. So I would definitely recommend that as you guys are cutting these, go slow. All right, rotate your paper as you're cutting out. I understand that cutting out sometimes when you have a lot of loops can be kind of difficult, all right? So just take your time and go nice and slow. All right, check it out. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. All right, <laughs> so uh, remember, place your scraps off to the side because we're going to be coming back to those. Now, I want you to go ahead and bring your um, 
cardboard back in and I want you to see if you have some room where you can assemble this. Now I can see that over actually on my side here, this is gonna be a great space for me to go ahead and put um, my Colograph together on. So what I might actually do is just come here and sort of snip this down and again, place the rest of my cardboard that I can use later off to the side. So scrap pile and scrap pile. Now, okay, so before you guys start to actually assemble these on here, I want you to sort of plan out how these are gonna look. So for instance, if this is the, my top bun, and I know that this can be my bottom bun, all of my ingredients are gonna need to go within this middle space, okay? So remember that we have here, this was our patty, and I remember that we created some extra cheese that we could like overlap onto it. So I might wanna figure out, okay, what's the best area for that cheese? I'm kind of liking how that looks, right? Now, I may want my patty to actually go down maybe in about the middle, all right? Um, when it comes to my tomatoes, now you can see they're starting to fall apart because I haven't put them together yet, but I might wanna plan that, okay, my tomatoes are gonna overlap. So I'm gonna have those go on top of my cheese and my patty. And again, we'll glue those all together so they're not flipping all over the place. I might also decide that I want my onion rings to go on top of those tomatoes. So with Colographs, we're thinking about overlapping, okay? Because this is gonna help us get the best result when we go to make our prints. Now I'm gonna put my patty just a little bit on top, kind of like that, okay? Um, now let's think about our lettuce. So. I would say we want our lettuce to um, go ahead and overlap on top of our patty just a little bit. And I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna overlap like that. And I think I'll take this shape and maybe, let's actually take that, overlap that right about, oh, it changed my mind. So this is why we plan first. Okay, that piece I think I want to go there. This one I want to come on top and this little guy is gonna come something like that okay yeah i think i'm liking how that looks great so now i would take this and i am going to move this up here remember we're just planning out right now all right i love it look at this little burger all right so again this is my plan so what i'm gonna start by doing is i'm gonna work from the bottom up because as you guys can see here, everything that I am um, like overlapping uh, gets, or like the part that's on top is the part that's all the way up here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna scooch out my bottom patty and I'm gonna be gluing it down here and then again, building up. So let's talk about how you're gonna adhere these. Now, if you have this liquid glue um, at home. I would definitely recommend using this, but if you don't have it, that's okay. You can totally use a glue stick. Um, if you don't have glue, you could use tape. I would definitely recommend that you make sure that you tape on the back sides of your cardboard and tape them down. We don't necessarily want any tape coming on top of these because you will see that when you go to make your prints, but you could always tape on the back side. Um, if you don't have tape, you can staple. You could even use maybe some paper clips. Um, you can always talk to me if you need some help figuring out what to do with your materials. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna take, like I said, my liquid glue here and I'm going to go ahead and glue down the first bottom layer of my super adorable um, Colograph hamburger. You guys can see I'm just using a little bit of glue. I don't want to use too much, but I also want to make sure that I put enough for it to stick down. All right, go ahead and push that down. Hold it in place, I'd say, for probably about 20 seconds, okay? Now I wanna go ahead and I wanna pull these out here. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this one on top of this one first and then I'm gonna glue both of them on top of here. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna apply glue on this side. Whoa, quite a lot of big glue came out there. That's all right, accidents happen. Okay, so that was again, quite a bit, a lot of glue. Quite a bit, a lot of glue, quite a bit, a lot of glue. 
All right. So on a scale of one to 10, how crazy do you think Miss G is? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to push that down. You guys can see there's some glue that came up. I might take my finger and sort of smear that. All right. Good. So press and hold down. Really make sure that those pieces glue onto each other. Okay. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to do a thin little bit of glue and I'm going to glue those on top of my burger and say right about there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just start to glue on the next three pieces, which is going to be my last piece of lettuce my um, patty and my cheese, and then I'll show you guys again how we're gonna glue on our tomato pieces. All right, friends, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna push this part up, as well as my little onion rings, and I'm going to show you how we are going to glue our tomatoes. I'm gonna pull them off the side, but be, because before we go ahead and we glue them um, onto our rest of our burger that we're building, um, we're gonna wanna make sure that we glue these parts on nice and secure. So what I'm gonna do um, is just put a little dot of glue on the back of each one. Okay, so let me come here. And again, remember that I want them to all meet at a point. So watch as I do this, okay. So even if it's like one part's a little bit higher, that's okay. You just want all of their points to meet together. And you can watch me do this one before you start on yours, okay? Just to make sure that you do it right. And I'm gonna do some fun overlapping here. Cute! Oh my goodness, so again, hold these down, friends. Please make sure that they do um, get into place. That's really important for when we start to pull our prints. All right, here comes the big bun to top out our adorable little hamburger. Oh my goodness. When I look at my hamburger here, I see one little personal touch that I could go back to my scraps to and I could add on. Um, I'm going to show you what that's going to be. Now, I want you to also take a look at yours. And if you see any area where maybe you want to add in some extra details, um, aside from this little trick that I'm going to show you, then I would totally love to see you add those in. Maybe you want to add some detail to your bun. Maybe you want to do a little bit of extra cheese kind of dripping down here on the sides. Maybe some extra lettuce. Maybe you want some mushrooms. Totally feel free to do that. But let me show you this cute little thing that I'm going to do. So on my bun, I'm thinking what would look really nice since I have some empty space here. So what if I add some sesame seeds, all right? Now, I don't have to make them too big, and I'll show you. I could go ahead here and sort of draw them out. So I might want to come here, and the best way to do it is to sort of draw a circle and then draw a triangle on top of that circle, and it gives you a little bit of that teardrop shape, okay? So that's one way you could do it. Um, or you could just sort of cut out on your scraps as you're going, um, just sort of cut out maybe just a circle and that could be your little dot that you put on. So I think what I'm gonna do, I usually like to draw things out before I cut just to make sure. And I'm gonna exaggerate the size of these and what I mean when I say that is I understand that sesame seeds are usually smaller than this but because we are making this fun collagraph um, and we want our details to show through without having to glue on a bunch of teeny teeny tiny little pieces, we're going to make these bigger just for fun. So, okay, so, so far I've only cut out six. Let's see if I wanna do the other ones or if I feel pretty good about these six that I've cut out. Now I'm going to arrange them in a variety of different directions. Um, I don't need them to all go the same way. I think it's um, a little bit more fun to place them in some different patterns. So I'm kind of liking how this looks. I'm thinking maybe one more to sort of top this out. 
All right, friends, so as you can see, I have finished gluing on my little extra touches. Um, so let's go ahead, let's let this dry for a minute before we start to pull some prints. So your next thing that I need you to do is go ahead and find three sheets of paper. Now you could use some colored paper if you would like. Um, I would go ahead and make sure that it's light colored paper just because we are going to be pulling prints and it might be hard to do that with colored pencil or crayon if your paper is too dark, like for instance, a dark blue. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use actually some paper that I have here um, that actually has some stuff on the back of it, some scrap paper that's in our house. So you can see there's some stuff on the back, but I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use this front part, all right? Or rather the back side of it. Now for your prints, you could um, go ahead and cut them down to the size that your piece is. Um, or you could do more than one uh, print on a sheet of paper and cut them down later. Um, for me, I think I've just decided that I am going to do probably about two per sheet and we're gonna do three in total. So after I've done this, I'll just move to another sheet and use that. Now for um, doing your prints, I would definitely say it's best if you have crayons um, or you have colored pencils to do these prints. If you don't happen to have either of those, I'm finding that marker's not really gonna help you pull print so much. Um, so you could definitely try pencil. That's an option. You just gotta make sure you go slow and steady. All right, so coming back to my color graph here, again, I've given it some time to dry. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it down a little bit more to size. So take this scrap paper and please make sure that you save it for another time. And I'm gonna come down here and cut this area. Fantastic. Okay, so my collar graph is now going to look like this. All right, so we've completed it on a um, extra cardboard backing. Now, let's go ahead and let's make some prints. Now I'm gonna come here with my sheet of paper. Okay, and I'm going to place it on top just like this. Um, you guys can see that I'm going close to the edge but not all the way. All right, so now in order to pull this print, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to hold down and I'm going to press my colored pencil and I'm going to go over the same spots, okay, very slowly with a, a good amount of pressure. So I'm actually, let's see, I'm gonna move this just right about here. Let's go ahead and... You guys can see, oh, look how cute my little sesame seeds are. I'm going really slow, all right, and I'm holding down and I'm going over the same areas, okay, more than once. I've got to apply pressure as I go, okay, and take my time move my hand as I change directions as I pull this print. Okay, so, all right, so check it out. Oh my goodness, here is our first print. It is so cute. So our next color, again, I'm just going to use that same sheet of paper and I'll worry about cutting them out later. So I'm gonna line this up and let's do our next color. Yay, check it out. I have three prints that I made. So when I go to cut it out, I can go ahead and just cut along this edge. So let's see. I don't know if all three of these will fit on here, but if they did, that'd be pretty cool. Guys, I am so excited. I cannot wait to see how these come out for you all. I hope you have had so much fun today doing our hamburger collar graphs, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.